morning, St. Therese family. Good morning, Mr. DeVore. It is good to be with you again on this Friday morning, wrapping up our 18th week of school, the halfway point. And uh, we're excited to have our fourth grade faith-filled servant leaders um, to get us started today. Before we do that, we know there's a lot of things to be praying for right now, a lot of people in need of our prayers. And so let's just take a few seconds to quiet ourselves and to remember that no matter where we are, we're in the holy presence of our God. And Sister Mason will get us started this morning. Good morning, St. Therese family. Good morning, Mason. Welcome to our prayer service this morning. We are blessed as individuals and as a St. Therese family to come together to offer our gratitude to God as community today. As we listen to God's word and reflect on our blessings, let us be attentive listeners that put these words and ideas into action. Please stand and join us in singing with full voice and full heart our opening song, Oh Give Thanks. Oh give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. some praise this morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And we begin our prayer service together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bow our heads for our opening prayer this morning. Almighty Creator God, we give you thanks for this day, for this new year, for the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and for the ability to start anew this week. As we continue to hear messages about your calls to your disciples, help us to open our ears and our hearts to listen to you and to continue your work in our lives today. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, and let the children say, Amen. Amen. Well, if you were standing, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord, and Brother Keith has our first reading for us today. A reading from the book of, Prof of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce it to the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh. According to the Lord's bidding, now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walking, announcing, Four days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast. And all of them, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw their actions, how they turned away from the evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened them to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. And let's give Brother Keith a round of applause this morning. Excellent job, Keith. And for our responsorial psalm today, we have Sister Ava. The response is, teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach, teach me your ways, ways, O Lord. 
Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your path. Guide me through your truth and teach me for you, for you are God, my Savior. Teach me your ways, your ways O Lord. Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach, Teach me your ways, ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways. Teach your ways, O Lord. O Lord. All right, let's give Sister Ava a round of applause. Great job, Sister Ava. And we will now go to our second reading, which will be read by Sister Layla. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having lies act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using in the world as it not using it fully, for the world in its, in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. And let's give Sister Layla a round of applause. Great job, Layla. And it is now time for us to stand and sing our Alleluia together. Ready, sing. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. <laughs> Sister Nicole has our gospel today. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They are fishermen. Jesus said to come to them. Come after, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned the nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in the boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left in their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, well, let's give Sister Nicole and Sister Honora a round of applause. I think we also owe Sister Honora's dog, who gave a little amen in there, a round of applause. Fourth grade uh, loves their, their puppies, so fitting, very fitting to have uh, some pet presence with us today. Um, well, fourth graders, it's great to be with you as a uh, we continue on and wrap up our 18th week of school. It's, it's a big week for us as, as scholars. It's the halfway point in our school year. And so whether we're satisfied with how we've done so far or, or really not happy with, with how our performance has been, it's a good chance to look back and then know we have a whole nother half of our school year to make the growth and improvements we want. And for our nation, it's also a big week of transition and change. Who can? Uh, raise their hand and, and tell us what was the big news in the United States of America this week? Sister Ava, go ahead and unmute. Well, Miss 
after now President Biden, it was sweared in as president, it, and Kamala Harris was also sweared in as vice president of the United States, and it's a transfer of power. Very good. All right. Well done, Ava. So we had um, the transition between the outgoing administration and the incoming one, and we know it got a little a little tense in the last couple of weeks. Um, but at the end of the day, Wednesday happened and it went smoothly. And now we have President Joe Biden. And what's his claim to fame? What's what's historical for us as a Catholic school? Um, how is Joe Biden connected to us? Anybody know? Sister Honora? He's the second Catholic president. Very good. So he's the second Catholic president of the United States. And so while we're always praying for our leaders, we know a little bit more about this one's faith. And so we, we can hold him uh, to account to make sure that it's staying with him as he makes decisions as our leader. And there was also a lot of history made with our vice president. So who can tell us some of the history that uh, Vice President Kamala Harris helped make this week? Give me one piece of history, Keith. Oh, one piece of history she made was the first woman and black vice president, vice president in the United States. That's good. I think you just took two, didn't you? I believe he said first woman and first black. Um, and there's one other part of her identity that's another first. Great job, Keith. What's that? What's that third piece that we've heard celebrated? Back to Sister Ava. She is also Indian, part Indian. So she's also the first woman black Indian person. That's right, that's right. And so to clarify, it's the country of India. So, um, so we could say first Asian or first South Asian. There's a, a lot of firsts. And I think um, in many ways we might say that's, that's the American story in, in our current vice president who have come from backgrounds of, of different families coming to the United States, meeting from different parts of the world, and, and now she's the vice president. So, so we pray um, that the beginning of their administration is smooth, because we know our country could use some healing, some unity, and um, hopefully some policies and practices more reflective of what we want to see and what we believe. Um, but all that said, uh, our nation's one thing, our gospel is another. And so we have some great readings this week as we continue to learn about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and mercy, justice, love, new beginnings in our country. And then we get this great set of readings. So, so we have some great reminders today. And uh, I would say one theme here is, is, is about the call. And so in the first reading, we hear about Jonah. Um, and Jonah was called by God to do something that he did not want to do. Does anybody know what God wanted Jonah to do? Didn't necessarily hear it. Well, actually we did, but a lot of words. Keith? Tell the people of Nineveh, I don't know, I think it's Nineveh, um, if they don't follow God or something like that, Nineveh will be destroyed. Like yeah, yeah. So he had to go tell the people of Nineveh that they got to get their act together, right? Um, they need to change their behavior or bad things are going to happen to them. In general, is that a message that people love to go tell others? Is that easy to do to go tell other people about all the mistakes they're making? And I'm not talking about your little brother or sister. That's easy. But a whole nother country, a whole nother people. How do you think Jonah was going to be treated upon delivering that news? How, what do you think he thought? Emmy? I would feel scared, and I bet he would too, because they might have done some bad, really, really bad things to him. Yeah, because if, if... He could have been thinking there right when he was told that he need to go do that on all he would think 
what all the bad things the people might have done to him. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't exactly going to the friendly neighbor, right? These were the people not doing the right thing. And so he was terrified. And if you're familiar with the story of Jonah, you know he tried to get out of it, right? He tried to take a ship out of town and, and go far away, but God has a way, right? If God has a plan for us, we can try to hide, but get on that ship, get thrown overboard, and a whale's going to spit you out exactly where you need to be if you follow the story of Jonah. And so sure enough, he did in the end listen to God and the people of Nineveh changed their ways. They weren't destroyed and Jonah became a hero. So it took courage, it took bravery, it took perseverance and it took a wild act of nature to get him there. But Jonah got the job done, the work of a prophet. And then we continue on hearing the story in the second reading of, of St. Paul saying, you know, whatever you've done before, throw it out the window because it's time to change our ways. We got to do things differently. And, and it, it, if I was a Corinthian, you know, time is running out. If you have wise, act like you don't. There's no weeping, no rejoicing. Like just we, we, we got to get to work. But the world in its present form is passing away. And it, it's only, so another warning that whatever we're doing needs to change. So the, the readings this week are really a wake up call, I think, for all of us that we have work to do. And we can't just expect the leaders of our country to fix everything and, and to repair everything. We are God's disciples. We are God's workers. And we have to contribute to that work. And that leads us to our gospel. Jesus is there. He's not very well known yet. He just got baptized, but um, he didn't have his followers. And so what does Jesus do in today's gospel? He's, he's out by the sea checking out the, the fisher, fishermen. And, and what happens? What does Jesus do? Emmy, take it away. He has, he, after John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and the kingdom of God at his hand. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. And Jesus said to them, Hey, Emmy, Emmy, time out. Are you reading it? <laughs> <laughs> You're reading it. I didn't say read it. I said what happened. But, but that's okay. That's okay. So go ahead and, and read the next part one more time. What did Jesus say to them? You're going to cut that part out of the video, right? Oh, no. This is real. Read, read that next line. Jesus says, come. Jesus says, come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Very good. So what, is, what does Jesus mean by that? These were people, they were professional fishers. They caught fish. You know, they had the fancy nets, big boats, equipment. What does it mean to make them fishers of men, Isaiah? Well, this is in my imagination. I'm thinking that they're fishers that fish for men. Yes, but not <laughs> physically. Although my brother did one time get a hook stuck in my head and caught me. I don't think that's what Jesus meant, but it, it can happen. I can tell you, Isaiah, I've been there. Um, I think that they're fishers, like they're men that are fishers and they have to do certain things, like they're disciples of God, but also. Very good. So we're not trying to catch people with a physical hook and reel them in, but rather catch people with love, catch people with justice, catch people with mercy and, and showing them what it looks like to walk humbly with God because if we do that, other people will want to join and become fishers of other human beings as well. And that was the call, because what did they do when Jesus made that ask? They didn't know this guy. They'd never heard him. But he said, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. And what did these brothers do? What did Simon and Andrew do right away? Mason? Mason? They abandoned their nets. They gave up the life they used to know. 
They walked away from the comforts, from the privileges, from the easy life, and they took on this new challenge. And so what we have in today's gospel is a reminder of our invitation. Every day we wake up, God is inviting us to join in the work of being a prophet. Some days we might feel like Jonah and want to kind of hide and set out on a boat to a faraway land. Other days we might feel like St. Paul, where we really understand what's needed. So we got to tell others we have to do the work. We cannot ignore the injustices and the pain around us. We can always look to the Gospels because Jesus' apostles weren't ready. They didn't go to college to become an apostle or a disciple of Jesus. They didn't have a degree. They listened. They saw that Jesus had the special gifts, and they followed. So we're invited to be those same disciples today, not to be perfect, but to see God in all we encounter. And so this month, we've been talking about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and he's another person who listened to Jesus. He did not plan on being a leader. He wanted to just preach. He wanted to just tell people about God. But God saw he had a different set of gifts. And so in 1955, when he was asked to lead and be the voice of the Montgomery bus boycott, he didn't take the next bus out of town. He stayed away from his home. And he did that hard work and traveled to so many other places to be that prophetic voice and others followed in our nation and many people are better as a result. So as we go about this day and this week and the rest of this year, I want us to think about what can we do to be prophets, people of justice, mercy, and love. And with Catholic Schools Week coming up where we celebrate our call to be a community of service, what are some ideas you have as fourth graders that we might be able to do to be prophets in our world today? What are some things you think we might be able to do? How can we be like James and John and, and catch other people and bring them closer to God? Isaiah, what's one way? One of two ways. Go for it. Okay. One is to spread the word of God. So to let know pe- to let people know that God like God is there to help. And second is to pick up trash, because that doesn't help the environment. Excellent. Yeah. So we can share these stories, these powerful transformational stories with others and pay attention to our earth, which is crying out in pain because of what we as humans have done. And so we can do our little part of, of picking up trash or making sure things get to the right recycle, compost, etc. cetera, bin. Great, Isaiah. Anybody else have ideas that we could do as fourth graders? Mason, another one. Even though we're still in quarantine, um, spend as much time as, with our, as we can with our families and um, everyone we can. Absolutely. One of the hardest parts of, of this time is, is those who are feeling lonely. And so we can acknowledge the blessing and, and be with those that it's safe to be around. And I might take that a step further, Mason, and maybe make those phone calls and, and write those letters or cards. Um, I got a card today from... Um, a senior housing center that we made some Christmas cards for with the, the children that were on campus. And they just said that the smiles on their residents' faces when they dropped them off were huge. So we're gonna do it again for Valentine's Day. They're not expecting it, but we can create cards and put a smile on people's face. And so it doesn't have to be a big grand Montgomery bus boycott to be a prophet. Little things with great love as our own St. Therese said. Thank you, Mason. All right, and last one, Emmy. What's another way we can be prophets in our world today? I was saying that I also recently just got a letter. Oh, and how did that make you feel? It made me feel happy. And um, it was someone who used to come to my grandma's daycare and they recently just went to Korea and they're hoping to see some really cool birds and sent some pictures. And that really made me happy. So I'm thinking of sending a letter back. 
Oh, I think... It also took two months to get here. Oh, Korea's a... Korea is a fair distance away, so that makes sense. But Emmy just shared exactly that small act of taking time to write and putting a very inexpensive stamp on a piece of paper can bring joy, can spread love. And so let's continue to do those things, share the ideas with each other, and set the world on fire with God's love. We know that following Jesus, being fishers of our fellow human beings can be challenging work, um, but it's possible, as we see in the witness of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the apostles in today's gospel. And so as we prepare to do this work, we also have some fourth graders who have written some prayers for us today. So I'll turn it over to them to offer our prayers at this time. Brother Isaiah is up first. For those who are suffering from COVID-19 and, and those who, who have lost during this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Sister Emmy. That our school community can safely return together in learning in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of our country that strive to bring about justice and peace in, our, in their service to our country each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Sister Megan. For all the people in our city and our world who are experiencing homelessness, that they find shelter and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mr. Lazo and his care team, that he continues to make a quick recovery, and for all those who work in health care, that they stay healthy themselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Brother Isaiah. For all the intentions told in the sound. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's give our prayer leaders a round of applause this morning. Thank you, fourth graders. And I'm just going to offer up one more prayer. Is, um, you know, our community has experienced a lot of loss of, of not any of our students or, or parents, um, but a lot of us have lost a parent, a grandparent, or other relatives in, in just this, this school year. And so we just want to lift up all those who have died and all of those grieving someone who've lost and ask God to bring that healing comfort in a special way to all of us. Can we pray to the Lord? Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. And we know that after Jesus gathered his disciples, um, one of the things he had to teach them was how to pray. So at this time, let's join virtual hands and pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. <laughs> Let us now offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you, fourth graders. Peace, peace, peace. Peace be with you, St. Therese family. All right. And let's go ahead and sing, but not actually touch. But let's sing together. One, two, ready, sing.
to stand. Once again, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. And uh, before we close up our prayer service today, I um, just want to take a moment to thank our fourth grade faith filled servant leaders for leading us this morning. Give you all a round of applause. Um, thought you were doing mass, got thrown a curveball, but did a great job um, preparing the readings and prayers. And uh, you'll be back on for Ash Wednesday. So, um, right after a five day break. So it's gonna be just legendary. And I can tell you're up for the challenge. Um, and we'll probably do that mass live real time and stream it to people in the real real moment. So that'll be good. Um, Ms. Tomich, did you have any recognitions you wanted to offer to the fourth grade at all? Um, I just wanted to add on to what you said and commend the fourth graders for their um, faith filled leadership today. Um, so many reader volunteers and people stepping up to fill positions um, and showing up um, for each other and um, for themselves every day. So thank you for all your hard work in the school year and coming back to 2021 with such energy. Um, looking forward to the rest of our school year together. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ms. Tomich. And, uh, um, right after we sing our closing song, um, I'm going to share one more video to, um, that I think really captures our SLE for this week. This week, we were focusing on being responsible lifelong learners who exhibit perseverance in the face of challenges. And I know the fourth grade and many other classes um, took some time to listen to our youth poet laureate, Amanda Gorman, this week, who spoke at the inauguration events in Washington, D.C., and I, I wanted to share her poem with everyone because uh, I think she speaks truth to where we are as a country, where we've been and, and what's possible. And again, like we heard in today's readings, our call to participate in working for justice, mercy and, and love to take over our nation. So, so we're gonna listen to that and uh, let uh, Sister Amanda Gorman close us out today. But before we do that, Let's turn it over to our own sister, Nicole, who will invite us to close out our prayer service. Please stand and join us in singing with full, heart, with full heart and full voice our closing song from the same school marching game. And remember the family who prays together. Days together. some praise. I hope you're singing loudly yourselves. Otherwise, I apologize for listening to my voice over and over. But um, before we close out our prayer service again, I wanted everybody to take a moment to um, listen to the words of, of this poem, and uh, we'll close out our week from there. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, Madam Vice President, Mr. Emhoff, Americans and the world. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace in the norms and notions of what just is, isn't 
always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promised glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared it at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised, but whole, benevolent, but bold, fierce, and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with every breath from my bronze pounded chest. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold limbed hills of the west. We will rise from the wind swept northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rimmed cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun baked south. We will rebuild reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid, the new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. 
Wow, let's give some snaps to Sister Amanda Gordon, the poet laureate, the youngest poet laureate in American history. Uh, many, many poets over the years have, have read at presidential inaugurations, but um, I think uh, Sister Amanda Gorman really spoke truth. So is there anything that the fourth graders know about Amanda Gorman that they wanted to, to share, things about her life? Makadiz, what, what can you tell us? She's from LA and she's 22. She is 22 and she's from LA. And, and I think she's also a great example of our SLE of being a responsible lifelong learner who persevered through challenges. Can anybody speak, speak to that part of her life at all? Keith? Uh, she couldn't read well and so she was an adult. Good, yeah. So she had some, some verbal challenges. Emmy, anything to add? She wasn't able to say, speak words very well, especially ones with the letter R in them until she was an adult. But that speech, that poem was amazing. Amen. Great sister. Well, well, the fourth grade kind of hit it. So, so this week we talked about persevering through challenges and really pushing ourselves to accomplish our goals. And I think Sister Amanda Gorman, who, who struggled to speak and to enunciate very well, um, is, is a great example of someone who lives this SLE every day. And I saw an interview and it was a joke, kind of like, why did you put so many words with R's in it to read in front of the whole country and the whole world? Um, but it was a testament to her courage to overcome it. So, so she's a good inspiration for all of us who are young and maybe don't know what you want to do with your futures. Um, it sounds like her plans are to run for president in 2036. So she's a good example of, of let's put our eyes on the prize of where we want to be and go get it. And so we'll close out our time today with a reminder of our MLK quote, which I have to look up real quick because there's so many words of wisdom from him that I forgot which one we're honoring today. Ah, it's straight into the point and very relevant. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So as we go into our weekend, we know we're gonna encounter darkness and we're gonna see hate in our world and in our lives. So let's be that light and that love that defeats it in the way our God calls us to. Have a great weekend, St. Therese family. And remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Thank you, fourth grade. Have a blessed weekend.